Aftermarket hinges for the Pimax Vision AKX, manufactured by 3D Connected Printing, originally designed by Pavel Rubin, a user of the Pimax OpenMR forms. Uh, modified a little bit by me to make them easier to 3D print. These, uh, the designs are public on GitHub. Also, I wish to express some gratitude to another user of the Pimax forums, the screen name DW Barnett, whose feedback has been especially helpful. And he's particularly identified that instead of using the procedure I recommend in my documents, to, he's recommended that the cowling on the headset can be removed uh, fairly easily. When I had my AKX for the first time, I found that it was fairly removable compared to the previous generation of headsets. And among other things, DW Barnett has confirmed that. So a huge thanks to him for that feedback and other things. Okay, so if you purchase the full kit from us, you get a set of hinges of various angles. Some hinges that are fully adjustable, the bases for those hinges are not pre-attached. You have to attach those yourselves. Uh, given how accurate 3D printers are in printing two sets of hinges to have exactly the same in-stop angle, most users probably won't use those, but they're available anyway. The 161 degree hinges are the hinges that we recommend. We also supply the screws and the posts that are assembled according to these documents. The first page of, or the first sheet of these documents uh, explains what these products are, how to use them, and includes the notices of where you can get the source files for the designs. The second is more of a manufacturing document that we use internally, but if you are assembling the hinges yourself, if you're using the fully adjustable hinges and you need to uh, mount the bases on the hinges, or if you are not using the default 161 degree hinges and you have to insert the small pillar post into the base, then this will help you out. The design of the hinges is fairly simple and is visually explained by this diagram. This is what you're looking at for, the, for most of the hinges. There is a screw on the back of the hinge that pulls in this small post, which I refer to as a pillar post, into the base. So today I am going to be swapping out these mostly blue hinges for the gray hinges that I currently have installed on the headset. The blue hinges here are prototypes. The we're made out of hips material. The gray hinges are PET-G, which is the material that we actually ship with. I am swapping these prototype hinges onto the headset so I can give a set of hinges that I know are in excellent condition, have been used for several months without problems to the form user DW Barnett since he had some unexpected problems. Also one last thing to note is you can tell which is the left and the right hinge because when the hinges are installed the numbers that are imprinted on the top of the hinges will be correct side up. The right side hinge here the numbers are mirrored, the left side hinge here, the numbers are in the usual orientation, red from left to right. Okay, so let's try to change out the hinges. Also, I should mention that if you were going to use the technique I originally recommended, of removing the hinge pins from the headset with a screwdriver. It is a good idea to find a screwdriver like this one, typical computer PC um, assembly screwdriver, and sort of dedicate it only to be used for these hinge pins. They do cam out if 
you're not extremely careful or if you change them out frequently. So it's a good idea to have a screwdriver that's in the best possible condition for that kind of work. Uh, also, if you are going to change out the screws that are holding the hinges themselves together, then you might want to have a multi-tip precision screwdriver set. The prototype, as you can see, uses Phillips head, hinges, Phillips head screws. The production units ship with screws that are standard and screws that are hex head. So first thing I am going to do after unplugging the modular audio strap audio connector is to remove the hinge pins. Also it helps to have a set of tweezers for pulling those out, although it's not really necessary. Notice that there is a bit of wiggle room for this hinge. That is to be expected. They shouldn't be tighter than that. If they are, that would suggest that there was too much flow when they were manufactured, which shouldn't happen. It could also suggest that an overhanging extrusion is left in the hinge, although that should be removed during manufacturing, at least for the 161 degree hinges. Of course, if you're printing them yourself, you will probably have to remove some extrusion. Okay, that takes care of that hinge. I will probably also a good time to undo headset strap. Also, if any of these steps appear physically difficult, they're not. I am just extremely careful working with this headset. Okay, now it's time to remove the other hinge pin. Also, be careful when using screwdrivers. Obviously, never allow them to get close to the lenses. That would leave a permanent scratch. This is one of the minor problems that can happen with the hinge, is it has been pushed a little to the side and driven down. Uh, if that happens, you may have to pull the caps off of the module audio strap here. And then it's easier to work with. That might have actually been a little difficult to do without tweezers. There we go. These are what the hinge pins look like. They have a Phillips head on one end and a small set of threads on the other end. Okay, so now I've completely removed the hinge from the strap and the headset on this side. Now I am going to remove the hinge from the modular audio strap on this side.
Okay, that takes care of the headset for the time being. Now we have a couple of hinges, a couple of pairs of hinges actually, a couple of caps, and a couple of hinge pins. Another way to tell which is the correct side is that the notch on the bottom of the hinge should be in the same direction as the audio connector would be. Now what D.W. Barnett has informed me of is that if the cowling is removed, this big black rubber piece is removed from the headset, then in theory it should be possible to take the hinges and turn them in towards the headset and slide them on top of the hinge pins and then it might not be necessary to remove the hinge pins at all. So the sort of tricky technique of reinserting the hinge pins would no longer be a problem. With my old 5K Plus, that being the one headset where I've had to swap some sort of hinges uh, without removing the cowling, I didn't want to remove the cowling from that headset because the 5K Plus cowling was much, much more difficult to remove than the AKX cowling, and I did not want to risk having difficulty reseating it in the proper orientation. This is a bit tricky because you have to use the screwdriver to apply some sideways pressure and keep the hinge pins from sort of dodging to the side of the of the threads that are on the headset that they're supposed to go into. Okay, so now we have the hinge attached to the headset. Make sure to apply some downward pressure when tightening this screw to avoid camming out. Camming out will damage the threads on the screw and after doing that enough times it will be rather difficult to deal with. That's what happens when Phillips head screws are used. For anyone designing consumer products, don't use Phillips head. Another sort of snag that can get you is the wires for the audio have a little channel that they go in that fits around where these caps rotate onto and that can get pinched and then it can get cut. What I did was I used a pen of ultraviolet curable epoxy made by Bondic actually found out about these at USA SEF and 
I just put a some dots of curable epoxy on top of the wires, make some bridges in there. There's plenty of room to do that. Cure it with the ultraviolet light. And now I don't have to worry about the wires getting pinched in there anymore. Okay, now I twist on this cap. And the hinge has been attached to the headset. The hinge has been attached to the modular audio strap. That side is done. You don't have to fully attach the hinge to both sides. Do these steps in whatever order is comfortable to you. And basically just following the same procedure on the opposite side. Insert the hinge pin, tighten it down. It's easy to see how a pair of tweezers is very helpful, but you don't need to have the tweezers. And now the hinge is attached to the headset. I put the cap on. And that should be it. Both hinges are now attached to both the headset and to the modular audio strap. Now I'm going to reinstall the top strap. Uh, hopefully I can do that without taking the cowling off. I guess I didn't really need to take this off, actually. I'm going to save myself some trouble there. Most users will probably find it easier to remove the cowling. It will certainly be a lot easier to work with all of the parts even if you do remove the hinge pins. The reason that I suggested removing the hinge pins without removing the cowling as sort of the default technique is because some of the older headsets like the 5K Plus could be difficult to reseat the cowling correctly and if you have that misaligned then you will have a much less comfortable VR experience and I don't want that to be, oh, that shouldn't have happened. I don't want that to be confusing as to whether the headset or the latest modification that you've made, these hinges or otherwise, I don't want people to be confused as to what their problem could be. It's always best to experiment with as few things at a time as possible. However, if the cowling 
comes off easily if it doesn't take a lot of force, which seems to be the case for these AKX units, then that's not really a concern. Okay, I think that should be it, except of course that I went and trapped my cables <laughs> inside of the headset strap. So I'll just pass those through. And I'll see if I can get some to attach the binder clips. Now obviously that step is not necessary. I just like to have the extra security of knowing that if the headset is hung upside down from the back of the strap, I like to know that the Velcro couldn't come loose over time. Okay, and that's it. The hinges are installed. They both have in stops. And now it's time to see if the headset fits well. It does. It's somewhat important to check that the headset stops at roughly the right, the same position on both sides. Uh, I think it would be fairly uncomfortable if you had a 161 degree hinge on one side and a 163 degree hinge on the other side. The headset would want to stop and sort of tilt to one side or the other. Another thing to watch out for is if you have any accessories, uh, eye tracking, hand tracking, anything that is an optical kind of accessory. Uh, obviously, avoid getting sharp objects anywhere near those accessories as well as the lenses of the headset. Oh, and if anyone thinks of doing this outside, remember that lenses on VR headsets uh, are at exactly the focal length or really close to it. They're basically at the focal length of the, or the displays are at the focal length of the lenses, which means if you expose these to sunlight, then it will focus the image of the sun on your displays, which would be very bad for them. So don't take it outdoors on a sunny day or anything like that. And that's it. Good luck and enjoy our products. And please leave us feedback so other users know whether these products are useful to them. Thank you.